Hello, my name is Sean Aston, and this is Sports School. While it's certainly true that winning isn't everything, some coaches and parents behave as if it is. Winning is important. It gives players a goal and validates their efforts. But as we're about to find out, winning can actually have a negative effect on children. And when it comes to learning life lessons, losing can be just as important, maybe more so. Keeping winning and losing in perspective is key to developing a player's character and ensuring their healthy and continued interest in competitive sports. Everybody wants to win, and there's nothing wrong with that. You can't take winning, and you wouldn't want to take winning and losing out of sports at any level. When I talk about winning, I talk about whether you emphasize winning or not, who it's important to. I think winning can only be a bad thing if it's held up as the end all and be all. We are here to win. At the youth sport level, no, you're not there to win. You're there to have a good experience for your child. You're there for the child to have some fun, to learn some skills, she gets to, you. to learn how to work with a group, to nice, learn maybe nice. how to bounce back dynamic. from a mistake or a setback. Winning is incidental to that process. Here we go, pull it back, that's it, and escape out. The greatest way it can have a negative effect is it can create the feeling eventually that not winning has some, some negative connotation. I mean, you know, when we have a team together, we have kids of, of different races, of different, of different religions. You know, they all come together and they have one goal to kind of work as a, as a functioning unit. And yet, if you decide that not winning is failure, then you've sort of undercut all those other lessons, all the positive lessons that the construct allows us. It also gives the direct impression that winning certainly is more important than anything else. Having fun would mean, I guess, you have fun when you win. And it's no fun when you don't win. Hmm. That makes it pretty a small window. You either win or you lose. Either you're a winner or a loser. The win at all cost attitude in sports trickles down from professional sports, where if you don't win, you lose your job. You know, you don't get uh, people in the seats to watch the game. That same mentality does trickle down and creep into youth sports. And when that when that happens, what we see is kids feel so much pressure to win, and ultimately, our kids don't have control whether or not they win on the scoreboard. Um, and whenever people are in a situation where they don't have control, they get very nervous, they get very anxious, and eventually, when you're nervous and you're anxious for long enough, you quit. Because nobody wins forever. Nobody wins all the time. You have to be able to deal with the fact that I don't win always, and I'm still OK with who I am. Losing is rarely, if ever, fun. Losing hurts and sours the moment. But beneath all that, there are a lot of positive lessons that can be learned from a loss. Some coaches will tell you that you can't actually teach your team anything after a win, and that actually, actually after a loss is when the team is more teachable. Responding to a loss, responding to an error, gives you an opportunity to select some new strategies, to learn something new, to take yourself to a higher level. You're not going to win every single game. It, it just doesn't happen that way. You know, it wouldn't be fun if that was how how it was. You know, you you have to lose a couple of times, especially when you lose. It, it, it teaches you things. That's where when I when I say it carries over to life, it teaches you humility, teaches you uh, accountability to each other. I think it teaches you that bounce back mentality. A kid must be allowed to, to, to lose. A kid must be allowed to win. They must be allowed to be mediocre. They must be allowed to pick themselves up if they lose. It's part of life. They're not here to actually be winners. They're here to be a person. I mean, it's not like you're going to die if you don't win. <laughs> no.
Everybody ready? Let's do straight hands. Effective across. coaching does not just mean teaching a player or team how to win. It also means teaching young people how to handle losing. Absolutely. The development of young people, I think, is the number one reason why you should get into coaching. Okay, when you come through the last bag and you feel that defensive player coming to hit you, you want to get low, okay, get low, and continue to drive so that you're gaining yards downfield. Often when I'm out talking to coaches, I'll ask them, uh, would you rather have your team perform to their best potential, give 100% of their effort, and really execute, but lose on the scoreboard, or would you rather win on the scoreboard, but really not be happy with the way your team played? Most coaches, believe it or not, will say they do want to have their team perform to their best effort. I've heard many great coaches say that the best team, or the most fun they ever had when coaching a team, was a team that didn't win a championship. But those guys gave it their all and tried in, as much as possible and worked so well together that there was never any friction. And they accomplished more based on their potential than other teams accomplished when they were really good and won a lot of games. So it's really important as a coach to not just focus on the scoreboard and by how much you lost or the specific reasons why you lost, but to focus on your team's effort. And if your team was able to execute some of the things you did in practice, you felt like they were really giving 100% of their effort through the game, um, there are some positive lessons that can come out of a loss and to really focus on those specifics. And there's still the greatness of competing in a manner that creates and, and fosters sportsmanship against an adversary on the field that becomes a friend on and off the field, even during that sort of adversarial construct of the game. We gotta learn from them. We gotta learn from these games, though, all right? <laughs> you see what they do? They pass the ball back. They they switch fields on us constantly. That's what some of the things we're aiming to learn how to do. We're working towards that goal, all right? It's okay. It's a good experience playing a team that's older and better because you can only get better by playing teams that are better than you are. What we're doing out here is striving to be the best people and best players that we can be. And if they've done that, they've won. Parents play a big role in fostering the right attitude toward winning and losing. That means focusing on everything but the scoreboard. My parents were, uh, you know, a crucial part of my life uh, as far as mentoring me, calming me down for games, you know, letting me know just to have fun. Um, because, you know, sports isn't as life or death as sometimes it may seem to be. At Positive Coaching Alliance, when we talk to parents, we talk about the life lessons. And as a parent, um, you let your children and the coaches focus on winning, and you as a parent should focus on teaching life lessons. A big life lesson is having a mastery approach to sports. So really focusing on your effort and giving 100% effort all the time. You may not control whether or not you got the hit or you scored the goal, but you can control your effort. It's really important for parents not to mention that, not to imply that that's important, not to express that to the child that he or she will be any less in the parent's eyes if a particular technical standard or statistic isn't achieved. The first thing out of your mouth has to be something encouraging and positive, especially, uh, especially after a loss. Excellent job, um, especially getting over your shyness about shooting, you know, not being afraid to put it up when the shot is there and it's yours and everything, so good work there. And if they lose, if they feel bad about it, what does bad mean, to be more real, if they feel sad about it, if they feel angry about it, give them time to process that emotion. Or you might say, do you want to talk about it? Most of the time they'll say no, but just asking means you love them, it means you care. And I think they also need to say at the end, it was great just to watch you out there. I love watching you. And you love watching them, whether they play great 
whether they play awful, whether they play somewhere in the middle. I love watching you out there. At the end of the day, remember that each individual game is only a very small piece of your child's athletic experience. In a few years, the final score won't matter, but the life lessons that come from playing certainly will. When I think back on my career as a youngster, as a high school player, as a college player, as a pro, I don't remember a whole lot of games, win or lose. I remember people that I played with and the relationships that I had with those people. Those are the most memorable parts of my sports life. Remember, in youth sports, winning and losing should only be a minor part of the experience. When kept in the right perspective, they can be used as tools to teach broad and meaningful life lessons that will carry over into all aspects of your kids' lives. I'm Sean Astin for Sports School, where sports are always in session. Red! Red! Red!